Hello everyone and welcome to SFF 180 and Night 4 of Halloween 2016. On tonight's episode, a film critic's obsession with researching a mysterious and forgotten filmmaker from the dawn of motion pictures leads her down a frightening and hazardous path into myth and madness in Gemma Files Experimental Film. Hello everybody, thank you all so much for joining me. Thomas here, your illustrious host as always. Okay, now for most people, you know, movies are just, you know, disposable pieces of entertainment to while away a few lazy hours over the weekend. But for those people who are really captivated, not only by the medium's marriage of art and technology, but by its incredibly rich and fascinating history, film is the closest thing we have to an actual time machine, a window into another world forever lost. Do a YouTube search for oldest film footage ever and you will find yourself hearing, even if only for like two or three seconds at a time, directly 12 or 13 decades into the past. As a way of documenting the human experience, there has been nothing to equal the impact of film. Just, just imagine if we had film footage from the Roman Empire. Uh, well, on second thought, don't. It would probably be pretty awful. Experimental film is an exceptionally accomplished and mature work of literary horror and weird fiction that utilizes film not only as the gateway between past and present, but between our world and others best left unexplored. Gemma Files crafts a character-driven mystery rendered with the kind of narrative clarity you rarely see in genre fiction, balancing finely detailed writing with suspense and emotional sensitivity towards both the strengths and the failings of its flawed main character. Lois Cairns is a film critic and teacher in Toronto whose career has been in something of a slump, and the demands of raising a young son on the ASD spectrum are leaving her both exhausted and with a sense of guilt over feeling that her life and her ambitions are being held back and left unfulfilled. One night, while screening some student films, she comes upon some footage that seems to be pretty ancient. She interviews the filmmaker, a young dude named Rob, who is one of those twee, pretentious dilettantes that you can usually find circulating around urban hipster art communities. Rob is such a total douche that he has added a completely superfluous W to his first name. After some initial investigating, Lois becomes convinced that the footage was shot in the early 20th century by an enigmatic lady known as Mrs. Iris Whitcomb, a lady best known for spending most of her adult life veiled in mourning over her lost son, Hyatt. Iris became obsessed with the spiritualist movement for obvious reasons, and is known to have been provided with filmmaking equipment by her doting wealthy husband. One day in 1918, Mrs. Whitcomb boarded a train, locked herself in her first class compartment, and disappeared while in transit. Now, the footage itself is very bizarre, and it appears to be a dramatization of an old Wendish legend about Lady Midday, a kind of demigod known for approaching farmers and laborers out in their fields, trolling them with a series of leading questions and then slicing their heads off if they got the answer wrong. Mrs. Whitcomb, it turns out, may not have just shot one movie, but several about this strange being. With one of her old students assisting, Lois believes that she has finally landed the kind of project for which she can get a grant to help herself move forward professionally. The discovery of the long-lost surviving body of work all of it recorded on highly, dangerously combustible silver nitrate film of Canada's first honest-to-goodness female filmmaker. But the further Lois begins to dig into the mysteries of Mrs. Whitcomb's past, it becomes frighteningly apparent that there may be more to this Lady Midday obsession than just old folklore. Now, when I say experimental film is literary horror, I mean it. If you're looking for anything in the way of a conventional spook show, in the Stephen King mold, you are in the wrong room. Gemma Files, whose own background in film runs deep, spends a great deal of the early part of the book rooting her tail in the world of the Canadian film community to such an immersive degree that much of the novel's first hundred pages reads almost exactly like a film critic's blog. But this has the benefit of grounding the story, which will go off in pursuit of mythicism and nightmare, in a solid reality. Also, Lois's personal family struggles give the character an emotional core that feels so true, it's often uncomfortable. There is her son Clark's condition. One interesting detail is that he is only able to communicate by quoting little lines of dialogue from movies and TV shows. There's her mother's nagging, which is heartfelt uh, and sincere, but no less annoying for all of that. And then there is her husband, who is 
film is heroic in his incredibly patient supportiveness. Everyone in this book feels like a real person, and that is what makes the story connect so powerfully. Experimental Film is a novel that comes to weird fiction at a complete right angle to anything else the genre has to offer. And like the earliest experimental filmmakers, Gemma Files is looking at horror narrative through a lens that is cocked at a slightly off angle to, to the rest of her contemporaries. The result gives us real people, real drama, a compelling and increasingly nerve-wracking mystery, and best of all, a tight plot that sticks the landing at the third act climax. It's an experience that will linger with you long after the credits have rolled and the house lights have come up. And that is all I have time for in this episode of SFF 180. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night at midnight for the next installment of Halloween 2016. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews. You are not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit the like button, share the video far and wide, and above all, please subscribe. If you have not already done so, that is what helps SFF 180 to grow as a channel. And until I see all of you awesome people next time, spooky reading.